What's up, my folks? All right, guys. Hope everyone is doing good. I enjoy talking with everybody. I've got a bunch of emails. I think I've, I got there's a few of guys that I've started from the top or at the bottom that might have emailed me a couple of days ago. I hadn't got to. I'll get to you guys. I'm just trying to go one day at a time. Um, I thought I'd drop a video real quick because I've had quite a few people asking me about um, things you can do to uh, work your dogs for the hunt. And uh, first of all, I'm gonna go on record here and saying everything I'm about to show you and and you know the equipment and all is strictly for uh, for catching hogs. It's not intended for any illegal purpose whatsoever. Uh, I'm just telling you and showing you that what we do to keep our dogs ready to get our dogs ready to hunt. And before I show you some of these videos that we took, I want to um, go ahead and show you some of the equipment. This is a uh, one of my jump jumps. It's basically it it just latches onto a tree, kind of like a lock on, same concept, but it's a lot heavier duty. I mean, I build them real heavy duty out of steel. I made the cleats real sharp and long when they dig in. I mean, you got to knock it out of there with a rubber mallet sometimes. So, um, and then you know, use a pretty decent strap. But the main thing is the spring. A lot of people would get these and they would just want, when I sold these, uh, now I just use them for my, I got some for myself, but I made for myself. But what we, uh, the problem I was having is people would use a weak spring. And, uh, you know, when I'm talking about the little, see, this is a small spring right here. You know, the little ones you get in a three pack for $30 or whatever it is. It's really like a, it's only like a 90 pound spring workload, okay? The, the minimum I would probably use um, is a big garage door spring on it. You know, something that can really stretch and give and go up higher with it. And I even got in a little bit of a pissing match with a guy and proved it to him. We kind of got a bet going, you know, cause I, done, I, know, I know how the dogs are. I know a, a real game dog will break one of those springs. And I mean, it can be dangerous, but uh, you know, um, just if you when you make these things if you make them or, or have one made or do any kind of spring pole work make sure you use use a good quality rope and spring and let's talk about the knot in the, um the hide um i've had a lot of questions asking about how the hide and big pieces and stuff i don't use a big piece if you notice here that's a small piece knotted in double and i run down about a foot and then i run a little piece on another knot with knots hanging off so they can get a good bite but the main thing is you want to use all your hardware, real heavy duty. See, I got real heavy duty hookups. I just hooked this little spring up to show something and took a picture of it. Um, but if you're going to use the little springs, that's strictly puppy shit when you're messing, starting to mess with your little young dogs because they will break them. So I, I trust me on that. They will break them. All right, guys, here's a video we took to show you. Okay, this is a, now this is a long time into it. Okay, I'll admit it. We made a little gentleman's bet that I bet that one session it'd break, and uh, um, I'm give, I'm saying it was a game of little spring I ever seen. It lasted a long time. We're getting up into two hours. Well, we're about in about an hour and forty five minutes here, and and then we paused it. You know, we started back up when because she was just kind of hanging on for dear life here. You know what I'm saying? But. She just kind of hanging on there it went that was i knew it was going because we seen it stretching okay uh and right in here i could see the i could see it weakening so i made them turn the video camera on and uh you could see it starting to weaken right there at the bottom and uh i knew it was coming but yeah it did last a while that was one of the longer lasting ones uh, but this dog wasn't in real great shape and uh she still broke it you know what i'm saying so make sure you guys use a heavy heavier duty than them like three pack springs you know them things ain't really they can't handle that kind of work <coughs> you'll see it just breaks i made them turn the camera back on real quick because i knew it was coming it started stretching right there at the bottom there it went but uh so yeah you guys watch that when you work them but that is a very good exercise for your dog to uh to condition your dog to hang on to that ear, to, to hang on to that snout, to whatever they need to hang on to for a good minute without losing their hold. I like a dog that don't have to regain hold a lot once he gets settled in a good hold. I like him to be able to work it. So this was uh, actually this dog, it was a long time, but that was a one hold break. It broke that fucking spring in one hold. She never got one session, more than one session off of it. So think about that when you're, um, when you're messing with your dogs and with them spring poles. And all right, guys, of course, everything, 
revolves around free running and conditioning. Um, this is a video of a dog that was uh, just she just been put back up, and this is about. I'm I'm taking this video to show y'all what when about the time you need to pull them off. You know she's only been on about 25 minutes, but see her back legs, how her back legs are starting to skip a little bit. Once they start doing that little skipping, you want to um kind of keep a real eye on them. Once see she's coming in that corner, she'll maybe skip a little bit. You know if they start ever skipping more than two or three skips in a row, you need to take them off there and rub them down real good. Okay, but um everyone's got a a video of a. a treadmill working you know and and all you can watch that how they work on the treadmill anytime and on and if you guys that live in um smaller places you know that might be the option for you but if you have a place that you can run a mill like this this is by far the for any kind of running catch dog uh even a deer hound man you put a deer hound on here we love running deer hounds on the cat mill they're in way good shape first day of deer season you ain't got to run them all summer and spook the deer up you know what i mean you can have them in shape right the first day. They in shape and uh, raring to go. So, you know, I mean, it's a good conditioning tool for any animal, any dog, any kind of dog. So if you got, uh, if you're into other kind of dogs too, man, they all benefit from the cat mill. I think this is by far head and shoulders above any for uh, any type of cardio conditioning program or any type of thing like that. Um, for ADBA show, and you can get them down really nice with these, pretty easy. Um, just like I said, work them up slow. Don't, don't put them on there and expect them to be, you know, running two and three and four hours. Don't listen to some of them old timers that used to say, put them on there for six hours. I think they told people that shit to, to ruin their dogs, man, and make them think that they had super dogs. I don't know any dog that could take a keep, uh, running six hours a day on a cat mill. They'd be beat to shit, man, before you even got to the woods with them. So, Take it easy on them. Give them a day on, a day off here and there. Let them rest. Let them make sure they get plenty of rest. You know what I'm saying? Um, and feed good. And when they're fat like this bitch right here is fat, don't uh, don't push them too hard on you. It ain't no all day. You know what I mean? It takes time. Everything's about time. So uh, you guys just work them slow on it, and uh, they'll come right along by shit. Like I said, a couple months doing you know good feed, good hand walking, a little bit of mill work, a little bit of uh, spring jump jump work. Uh, you, you'll have them in good enough you know, shape to hunt with, but, uh, you know, main thing is that diet. You got to be consistent with that diet too. So you guys, y'all take care and keep on bulldogging. And I hope this answers some of y'all's questions. I mean, like I said, I know everybody can't have access to a cat mill, but that's what you asked what I believe the truly the best way. And that's what I believe is the best way to condition the run and catch dog is a cat mill. Um, it's just, it's a, the best way I think. So anyway, you guys take care and Keep bulldogging and get them hogs ready. Them dogs ready for them hogs because springtime comes early. There's enough y'all coming that can come down that we can have a damn good time. Y'all take care and keep on bulldogging.